Good morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Happy New Year. Uh, it's a New Year's uh, thing. We are going to be talking about New Year's resolutions. Uh, it's definitely not a new thing, but if you would get your Bible, open it up to Daniel chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5. New Year's resolutions are not uh, new. Uh, they've been around since Babylonian times. Um, the archaeologists are discovering more and more about these things. And... Um, and it's more of just human nature. We, we want to make, when, when the new year comes, we want to do something different than we've done before. Now, some people take it kind of tongue in cheek and say, well, you know, I really hate eating whatever it is. So therefore, I'll make a resolution not to eat that all year long. Well, that really defeats the purpose of having a resolution. But if you make a resolution, keep it. All right. If you make a resolution to God, you best keep it. Uh, to yourself, well, you might let yourself down, but, uh, you know, that's on you. All right, so Daniel, chapter 5, Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. So this is a great feast, banquet hall style. You've got all these people spread out all over the place, wide area. Um, and they bring out the wine to, to taste it. So Belshazzar, whilst he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines might drink therein. Okay, well, just getting those particular items would not necessarily be so bad. All right. Uh, they are the Lord's vessels. They were consecrated, set apart, sanctified for the for holy use uh, in the temple of the one true and living God. Um, but he goes further than that, and there's the problem. So evidently, Belshazzar in this uh, Belshazzar, of course, is the uh, if I under, if I remember correctly, is the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, they still call him father, and that's just part of the Aramaism, you know, the way they called it. Um, and the queen that comes in may actually be the wife of Nebuchadnezzar. I'm not sure. It doesn't say who it is or maybe, you know, but that's okay. We don't have to know everything about it, but we know that these are real people. This really took place. And I'm still waiting for archaeologists to dig out that one wall. Maybe it's painted over. Maybe it's not. And there are those words written right there. I think it'd be pretty pretty terrifying, just as this uh, was to uh, Belshazzar. Verse three. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem, and the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines, drank in them. They destroyed Jerusalem, burned it, took the walls and burned them and charred them, so that there were no more protection for Jerusalem. They took all the great houses and all, this, all of the city and they burned it to the ground and left nothing there but the poorest of the poor to uh, tend to the land so that it wouldn't go wild. Um, they brought the items. Uh, not all of it was, was here where uh, Belshazzar is, so they couldn't go fetch them easily. Uh, they're still looking for the actual treasury of Babylonia. Haven't found it yet, uh, but there, you know, you, you think of, uh, I don't know if you've ever uh, read a Latin, you know, the, the, the tale of that, and there's a cave, it opens up, open sesame, you know, cave opens up, you go inside, it's filled, filled to the gills with treasure, or, or if you've seen the movie National Treasure, and they get into this place of treasury, I suspect there's something like that, but we haven't found it yet, but uh, there, it's there somewhere, I'm sure, uh, but part of these vessels have been brought in. These are not all. If you read the inventories of what was made for the uh, temple over the years, you would know that, that, that this is just a tiny fraction of the gold and silver uh, bowls and, and things that were used because you had thousands upon thousands that came in to be fed during the feasts okay, at the temple. Um, so they drank wine, and here's where they transgress. They praised the gods, little g gods, of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. 
And as soon as they did that, in the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick, the big candelabra that brought light for the area, upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw part of the hand that wrote. What would you do? Now, you know, we have us modern day uh, uh, high tech, uh, you know, uh, stuff on films that, that, that make special effects that, that make it look like we could, you know, so we're not so jaded as, as someone, you know, we're more jaded than, than someone from, from maybe 50, 60 years ago even. But if you can just imagine just seeing this hand writing upon the wall and you can't understand what the hand is writing and you've just done something you know is wrong. Just granted, okay? Dude was trying to pick a fight with God. Not smart to ever try to pick a fight with the one true and living God. Who are you compared to God? We know that we are nothing, and he is everything. Um, but since he was king, he decided he was king. He was king! And he could do whatever the heck he wanted. That's Some of these uh, people in power today think they can do whatever they want want understand there is a god he is living and he will hold you accountable for every deed action word that you do nothing escapes him so they drank wine praised the gods of gold and of silver of brass of iron of wood and stone and in the same hour came forth the fingers of a man hand and rode over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace and the king saw a part of the hand that wrote, and then the king's countenance was changed. Whoo, white as a ghost. His thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins <clears throat> were loosed. He needed a bath after that. And his knees smote one against another. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, the soothsayers, the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with scarlet, the most expensive of clothing, and have a chain of gold about his neck. Wouldn't be small either. And shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Well, then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing, nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof. That just made matters worse. The tension was so thick, you could cut it with a knife. And then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him. And then all the rulers of the land, all his lords, were astonied. It's like they're just uh, dumbfounded. They didn't, they were clueless. They didn't know what to do. They, they suddenly, what a way to end a, a banquet. Where's the music now? Well, a little change in tone. Now the queen, by reason of the words of the king and his lord, came into the banquet house and the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee, nor let thy countenance be changed. There is a man in thy kingdom, in whom is the spirit of the holy gods, and in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him, whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say, thy father, made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. Daniel's not young at this point. 70 maybe? Yeah, about 70 years old. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams and showing of hard sentences... And dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. 
Now let Daniel be called and he will show the interpretation. Queen was pretty confident. Could this be Queen Esther? Oh, probably not. We don't, we don't know. Then was Daniel brought in before the king. And the king spake and said unto Daniel, Art thou that Daniel, which art of the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king my father brought up out of Jewry? I have even heard of thee, that the spirit of the gods is in thee, and the, that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. Suddenly a little hope is kindled in the king. You can see the countenance is changing. He's, he's hungry. He wants to know the truth. He, he thinks finally he's going to get an answer to, to what has just totally terrified him. Verse 15, And now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me, that they should read this writing pointing over there, and make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But they could not show the interpretation of the thing. Now, I have heard of thee. that thou canst make interpretations and dissolve doubts, now if thou canst read the writing and make known to me the interpretation thereof, thou shalt be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about thy neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Wow. High honors. But you know, Daniel was never about that, ever. In fact, when given the opportunity to rule the province of Babylon, he said, well, let me have my three friends do the ruling part. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Let, let them do all the day-to-day the -day stuff. I'm going to go sit in the gates of the city and take care of the real issues of the day. Well... Verse 17, then Daniel answered and said before the king, let thy gifts be to thyself and give thy rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing unto the king and make known to him the interpretation. The king goes, right? No, this is not good. O thou king, the most high God, understand he's speaking to you know, polytheists that believe in, you know, they're one, they're, they have a hot, most high, they've got uh, more gods, they've got more gods under them, and more gods than them, than the thousands and ten thousands, and more and more gods, everything's a god, god here, god there, god, anyway. And they worship everything but the true, one true and living God. Daniel is going to kind of give a little lesson and kind of school Neb, uh, this uh, grandson of Nebuchadnezzar going to teach him a little bit about uh, what Nebuchadnezzar went through because Nebuchadnezzar, the, the, this, this guy knows, every king knows, he studied all the history, he knows everything that went on, he knows everything that transpired, but yet, what did he do? O thou king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. And for the majesty that he gave him, all peoples, nations, languages trembled and feared before him. Whom he would slew, he would slew. And whom he would kept alive, and whom he would set up, and whom he would put down. But when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. And he was driven from the sons of men and his heart was made like the beasts and his, his dwelling was with the wild donkeys and they fed him with grass like oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till he knew that the most high God ruled in the kingdom of men and that he appointed over it whomsoever he will. And thou, his son, O Belshazzar, has not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all of this. Ouch. Hard when you get called to task. You can almost see the king going, yeah, I did, I knew it, I knew it. At least the king is accepting of what's going on. You don't hear any excuses, you know. Any but, 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 or try to shift the blame to somebody else. Daniel continues, he says, but you basically have lifted thyself 
against the Lord of heaven. And they have brought the vessels of his house before thee. And thou and thy lords, thy wives, thy concubines have drunk wine in them. And thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold and brass and iron and wood and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know. And the God in whose hand is thy breath, thy breath is, and whose are all thy ways, hast thou not glorified. So the charge here is that you went to go praise all these things that have no breath, can't hear, can't see, can't do a thing for you. And you praise them as your gods and you glorify them, but you left out the one true and living God who has power of your, your breath and all your ways. Not glorified him. Verse 24, it was at that point, then was the part of the hand sent from him. And this writing was written. Ergo is why you were terrified. And this is the writing that was written. Mene, mene, tekel, ufarsin. Pronounce that different way. I've heard many, many tekel. I've heard it many different ways. But, you know, I'll just say mene, mene, tekel, ufarsin. Tekel, ufarsin. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mene. Says it twice, many, many, right? So, but God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. You're no longer king. Your kingdom's gone. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and are found wanting. You don't measure up to the standard that God has laid forth. Perez, he says here, he says, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. So the Ifarsin of is it's a it's a uh, like it's it's been splattered, scattered. Then commanded Belshazzar. You could at that point Belshazzar could have just commanded Daniel to be killed on the spot, right? Hey, most bat bearers of bad news, what do they do? They kill the messenger. <laughs> But instead, Belshazzar commanded, they, they clothed Daniel with scarlet. They put a chain of gold about his neck. They made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. Now, as far as uh, when I was talking about uh, on, on resolutions and things like that, Belshazzar should have not resolved himself to put himself up against the one true and living God. Just because you can't see God with your own eyes eyes physically doesn't mean he doesn't exist can you see the wind but you know it's there can you breathe the air can you see it no not normally okay lots of things like that that you could tie in but uh, this year if you're going to make a resolution make it something meaningful something personal uh, whether you share it with others or not if you share it with others and you'll be held accountable Obviously, if you want, and you should be wanting to be held accountable. Um, but because of his declaration, his resolution, Belshazzar, we find there was a cost beyond just the obvious of what happened already. Verse 30 says, In that night, just later on that, during that day, was Belshazzar the king of the Chaldeans slain. And Darius the Median took the kingdom, being about threescore and two years old, 62 years old. Uh, Darius or Darius uh, was a general and um, ruler. And when they came in, they diverted uh, the river, brought it straight into the uh, city that could not be destroyed, the walls could not be taken down, and they were able to just walk right in underneath. They walked right into the palace, to the central part. Not on dry land, but they walked right in and took the city, bam, that fast, that day, that point, that time. And that's what God does. You can't see it, but God has plans for you. God sets things up, prepositions, People, places, and things 
We have no idea. We are not God. We cannot see what he sees. But he does, and he has great plans for you if you will just be his. Trust in the Lord with all your mind, your heart, mind, soul, might, all your might, all your strength. Give it to him. Work for him. And let him use his plan and use you in his plan to further his kingdom. Don't be shy. Step up. God is going to uh, take good care of you. He took, took great care of Daniel. Daniel was not murdered with most of the other people who were killed that night, along with the king. Instead, he was uh, elevated, let's just call it, and became one of the rulers and advisors to, to, Dar to Darius. And um, that's what God wants to do with you if you'll trust him, if you'll let him be, you know, God to you. Let's pray. Father God, we